Okie dokie then. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Yuji. Uh, it's Monday, so from my schedule you should be expecting an author interview, but um, I ran out of backlog and I'm not scheduled to interview until later this week, so whoops. Uh, instead, I'm going to give you a two for one. I'm going to talk a little bit about audiobooks, and I'm also going to review Jamie Davis's uh, Prophecies Child, the audiobook. Now, I'm going to start with that. So, oh yeah, audiobooks are fantastic. Uh, I have only recently started getting into them. They are, you know, books done with narration. It's, it's absolutely lovely. So Jamie Davis, uh, you might have already seen the Charm Runner review, which I did but I don't remember how long ago that was. Um, that is book one of the Broken Throne series. Uh, it's an urban fantasy series following a girl named Winnie who uh, is a chanter, a uh, magician, and who is... well, she's getting into all sorts of trouble trying to save Baltimore and the other chanters from absolute chaos. It's quite entertaining. I loved the first book. It was great, and the ending brought about so many, so many different things. Uh, so Prophecy's Child, book two, was also quite good. Um, the writing itself went really well, things flowed very well. However, it was completely different because I was not reading the book, I was listening to it. Um, so there are some books like, well, let's go turn to the bookshelf. There are some books like the Three Musketeers, um, um, actually, some of the poetry pieces, some of the non-fiction pieces I've got, Tolkien's always fun, so never mind about that. Um, Dante, I think, would probably be a bit difficult. Uh, you know, things like, things like that, that, um, the non-fiction, some of the earlier pieces, uh, that just narration can be done really well with them, but it's not as good, I think, as reading it. Um, but then I am awfully fond of words, I'm awfully fond of reading, I read really quickly, and I am able to process things as I read very well. Um, so for some books though, like The Prophecy's Child, book. I think they just work really, really well with narration. Um, it's like having a movie laid out for you, except it's all in your head. You've got character voices being done by this narrator. You've got dramatic pauses. You've got the uh, narrative description that creates the images inside your head, and it's becomes almost more real because you're hearing it as well as, uh, well, you're not really seeing it, but you're visualizing it. That's the word. It's absolutely great. Uh, this book was narrated by Stacey Gonzalez and she, oh my goodness, she did really well. I would, um, initially when I started listening to this audiobook, I was a little bit skeptical. Um, she didn't quite fit the narration I had in my head from book one, but as I got into the first chapter, as I got into chapter two and continued listening, oh my goodness, it was absolutely fantastic. She managed to do the various accents perfectly, the um, cast of characters was varied and diverse, and you could tell exactly who was who based on the narration. She captured emotion spectacularly. I mean, it was just stunning. Uh, absolutely wonderful revelation in audiobooks. And honestly, uh, I really have enjoyed all of Jamie Davis's audiobooks that I've listened to thus far. That includes the Extreme Medical Services box set 1 through 3. I have uh, 4, 5, and 6 on my queue to be listened to at some point. Um, I'm really excited about that. So it's just really nice. And this coming from a person who... <sighs> I listen to silence a lot. Um, basically, prior to about a couple of weeks ago, I only listened to music um, 
when I was writing, and it was mostly classical music, uh, mostly pieces that I could listen to and not get distracted by, but still have the underlying emotion there. Um, even before, you know, when I listen to music and it's not part of my writing, I listen to primarily classical music. Uh, I'm a, you know, jazz person on occasion in some of the 80s British fusion rock. I'm not bothered by silence. Uh, most car rides I take, I'm either holding a conversation with someone or I'm thinking, and I live very well inside my head. Now recently I have had more bouts of silence because I do dictation now uh, as I write, so listening to music while doing dictation, not the best option I have found. So um, basically I listened to the audiobooks uh, as I was doing road trips, as I was um, exercising, and it was it was really cool. It was really nice. Um, I will probably not be a person who can devour audiobooks very quickly because most of my time is spent in silence, but I really I really enjoy the medium. I think it's a fascinating medium. And I think Prophecy's Child, apart from being a fantastic story and a great continuation on book one, uh, I think having it done in audiobook style was really, really nice. And I absolutely will be continuing on in that series. Which brings me to point two. Because I was not all that keen on audiobooks before, I was not all that interested, I'm okay with silence, it doesn't bother me, um, I didn't really understand the appeal before I started listening to audiobooks. And I talked with Jamie Davis in our interview, um, all of these linked in the description below, and you know what? He described it really well. The thing that, that makes audiobooks different is think back to to have who read to you or yeah. a babysitter who read to you. And that sense of someone performing the story, doing the voices, doing some, some of the, you know, acting out with their voice, some of the action that was going on, mm -hmm. um, building that tension. Uh, mm -hmm. A good storybook reader, a good storyteller can, can really make a story 100% better. And mm -hmm. that's what I've discovered. Um, I got into audiobooks because it's one of the fastest growing niches in the market right now. Yeah. Um, and so I, I really doubled down and, and invested in, in my audiobooks, knowing that it was going to take me a while to earn some of that, earn that money back, but it mm -hmm. was better to get in now and get in quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and the most joyful thing happened. The first time I heard somebody read my words back to me, it was like, I, it was like I was hearing somebody else's story. Wow. Um, cool. because it was, they were performing it. These are voice actors. They aren't just people reading mm -hmm. the words. They are, they are really very much performers. They are voice actors. And so they, they bring the words to life. They add phrasing in there that you never thought of that make it better. I had already planned on doing audiobooks for my books, sort of after I came to be a bit more established, after I had more books out, maybe I would do, you know, one series with an audiobook, but not all of them. And then I decided that, you know what, these audiobooks are fantastic. Why wouldn't I do it um, for all of my books? I know that audiobooks are a very swiftly growing market. Um, a lot of people listen to music, to audiobooks, to podcasts, to all of those things, and they like them a lot. And I, you know what, I, I kind of understand it now. Uh, so that brings me to my own audiobook journey. Now I, in the interview with Jamie Davis, he mentioned the company that he uses, Findaway Voices. They are an indie audiobook company uh, who sort of facilitates the uh, production, they help you find the narrators, the voice actors, uh, apply through them, they help you narrow down the list, and you know what? I'll just tell you how I went about doing my audiobook project on Findway Voices. So first things first, of course, you have to create the account. And of course, you have to agree to all their legal documentation and whatnot. And then you can upload your book and sort of say, okay, here's the audio style I want. I was looking for something for speaker boards a bit dark, perhaps cynical, perhaps a bit 
moody. Uh, I wanted a male narrator um, because the main character is male. I wanted something kind of more gritty. And so I put all of these specifications into my um, requirements for speaker of words and Find Away Voices handled the rest. I talked to a representative of Find Away Voices and found out how they actually do this. Um, they basically have computer algorithm that, okay, sorts out non-male. All right, great. They sort out people who have classification as like jolly, which I don't need. Uh, and then once they've gotten it down to about 300 or so, they have people, actual people, and this is really astonishing to me in this day and age of technology, that go through and sort of listen to the narration uh, samples, and then they send you a list of about 10. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's pretty impressive, because they have thousands of narrators that work with them um, and contract through them. Okay, so then I got my list of about 10 people. Once you get your list, you can go through and listen to the various um, samples that they've got, and you can decide if you want to hear an audition for them, or you can just hire that person right away, either way. Um, and so what I did is I auditioned three people, and what then happened was they recorded the first, oh, I think it was anywhere between five to ten minutes of audio for Speaker of Words. They read chapter one, parts of chapter one, and you could then pay, figure out which one of those uh, you wanted. So I narrowed it down to three. I had the three audition, and then I picked my, um, my narrator. And the really cool thing with Find Away Voices is they now offer sort of a, um, you know what, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a system where uh, you can pay half of your narrator's fee. Um, they charge, uh, you know, a fixed price per finished hour, so Speak Rewards is going to have approximately six um, finished hours of audio, and th that includes editing and all that stuff, and so then uh, fixed price uh, by, you know, let's say it's a hundred dollars. It's not, uh, I'm not going to give away the price, how much I'm paying it to this point. Um, so let's say it's a hundred dollars per printed hour. Okay, so then you do that and uh, so it's basically six hundred dollars. Uh, now Find Away Voices has a system where you can pay half of that price and the narrator then gets 20 percent of your royalties in the future. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, so you can pick and choose how you want to pay your narrator. That's uh, really fascinating. And then there's the distribution. Once your book is narrated, you basically let Findaway Voices handle it. Um, they have about 32, I think, people that they distribute with, including ACX. They do uh, through Amazon, um, including Barnes & Noble, including all of the other, you know, larger places that you would want your audiobook out there. Uh, you set the price, you know, you get the fixed amount of royalties, they deal with the distribution, they deal with the legal stuff, you own the rights to this audiobook, and it's fantastic. Now, audiobooks primarily these days are done through ACX, which is an Amazon company. You can, of course, get them through other places. You can get them through things like libraries, um, but most of the audiobooks are done through ACX. Now, ACX requires that you, if you do the creation of an audiobook through ACX, they require that you be exclusive with them for, I think, at least a year, um, which Okay, that can be a little bit annoying because there are so many other platforms out there to distribute on and so many other ways to do things and you can't really like give away an audiobook um, the way you can if you own the rights yourself. And you know what? In this day and age, I am all for the indie. I am all for the little guy. Uh, this process has been super easy. Uh, basically, I uploaded my book. Uh, I picked my narrator. I've given production notes. I have to do a little bit extra because of the conlang in Speaker of Words. People have been great to deal with. I talked with one of the representatives. I mean, they're awesome. They're super friendly. They're super helpful. You actually get to talk to people if you have questions. Um, the process is pretty transparent. Um, their website is nice to work with. I like them a lot. So, 
you know what? Welcome to the age of the audiobook. I'm I'm really excited to be doing audiobooks. Uh, I absolutely loved listening to Jamie Davis's audiobook, uh, and I think this is a great medium uh, for people who are super busy, who don't like reading per se, but love listening to music or podcasts or whatever. It's going to be a journey. I'm very curious to see how it ends up. Uh, Speaker Board's audiobook is currently in production. I'm really keen on it. So I will give you as many updates as I have. In the meantime, I would highly suggest listening to the Broken Throne series by Jamie Davis on audiobook, or if you're looking for something a little bit more whimsical, I would say, try the Extreme Medical Services. The narrator for that one, I don't remember his name, but <laughs> he is super entertaining, and I like it a lot. Um, otherwise, that is pretty much all I've got for you today. Next week, Monday schedule should be back to normal with our author interviews. Uh, if you're interested in an author interview, contact Michael Evan or myself. Uh, all of the links, as usual, in the description box below. In the meantime... Hello, darling. Meow. In the meantime, uh, I think I'm about to be um, attacked by a cat. In fact, I am about to be attacked by a cat. Ooh, yes. Super cute. <laughs> so that's all I've got for you today. I'm gonna go deal with this one, and I will see you next time.